and I'm playing Danny's dad. My name is Claire and I'm playing narrator who is Danny. My name is Adam and I'm playing Sergeant Enoch Samways. My name is Henry and I'm playing Mr. Hazel. Danny the Champion of the World by Roald Dahl is a book about a boy named Danny whose dad has a hobby of poaching pheasants from a rich and cruel man named Victor Hazel. Every year, Mr. Hazel holds a great shooting party where important people from all over the world come to shoot the pheasants in his wood. One year, Danny comes up with an ingenious plan to capture all the pheasants with the aid of a sleeping powder, ruining the shooting party and infuriating Mr. Hazel. The scene that we will be acting out takes place at the filling station, where Danny and his father work. The stolen pheasants have woken up and are dazedly waddling around. Mr. Hazel is about to arrive on the scene. The big shiny silver Rolls Royce had break suddenly and come to a stop right alongside the filling station. Behind the wheel, I could see the enormous pink fairy face of Mr. Victor Hazel staring at the pheasants. I could see the mouth hanging open, the eyes bulging out of his head like toadstools, and the skin of his face turning from pink to bright scarlet. He started shouting at us the moment he got out of the car, and he went on shouting for a long time after that. I glanced at my father. He was standing very still and very calm, waiting for the shouting to finish. At last, my father said, But they're not your pheasants, they're mine. Don't lie to me, man. I'm the only person around here who has pheasants. They're on my land. They flew onto my land, and so as long as they stay on my land, they belong to me. Don't you know the rules, you bloated old blue-faced baboon? Mr. Hazel's skin turned from scarlet to purple. His eyes and his cheeks were bulging so much with rage, it looked as though someone was blowing up his face with a pump. He glared at my father. Then he glared at the dopey pheasants swarming all over the filling station. What's the matter with him? What have you done with him? At this point, pedaling grandly toward us on his black bicycle, came the arm of the law in the shape of Sergeant Enoch Samways, resplendent in his blue uniform and shining silver buttons. Sergeant Samways dismounted from his bicycle and threaded his way carefully through the mass of pheasants squatting on the ground. The face behind the big black mustache showed no surprise, no anger, no emotion of any kind. It was calm and neutral, as the face of the law should always be. Well, well, well. What, may I ask, is happening around here? Sergeant Samways had a funny habit of sometimes putting the letter H in front of words that shouldn't have an H there at all. And as though to balance things out, he would take away the H from all the words that should have begun with that letter. I'll tell you what's happening around here. These are my pheasants, and this rogue has enticed them out of my woods onto his filthy little filling station. Enticed them? Enticed them, did you say? Of course he enticed them. Well now, this is a very interesting accusation. Very interesting indeed, because I ain't never heard of nobody enticing a pheasant across six miles of fields and open countryside. How do you think this enticing was performed, Mr. Hazel, if I may ask? Don't ask me how he did it, because I don't know, but he's done it, all right. The proof is all around you. All my finest birds are sitting here in this di dirty little filling station when they ought to be up in my own wood getting ready for the shoot. Am I correct? Am I absolutely accurate in thinking that today is the day of your great shooting party, Mr. Hazel? That's the whole point. And if I don't get these birds back on my land quick and sharp, some very important people are going to be extremely angry this morning. And one of my guests, I'll have you know, Sergeant, is none other than your own boss, Chief Constable of the County. So you'd better d do something about it fast, hadn't you? Unless you want to lose those Sergeant Stripes of yours. Sergeant Samways did not like people poking their fingers in his chest, least of all Mr. Hazel. And he showed it by twitching his upper lip so violently that his mustache came alive and jumped about like some small bristly animal. Now just one minute. Now just one minute, please. Am I to understand that you are accusing this gentleman here of committing this hack? Of course I am. I know he did it. And do you have any evidence to support this accusation? The evidence is all around you. Are you blind or something? Now my father stepped forward. He took one small pace to the front and fixed Mr. Hazel with his marvelous bright twinkly eyes. Surely you know how these pheasants came here? Surely I do not know how they came here. Then I shall tell you, because it is quite simple, really. They all knew they were going to be shot today if they stayed in your wood, so they flew in here to wait until the shooting was over. Rubbish! It's not rubbish at all. They are extremely intelligent birds, pheasants. 
It would be undoubtedly a great honor to be shot by the chief constable of the county, an even greater one to be eaten afterwards by Lord Thistleway. But I do not think a pheasant would see it that way. You're scoundrels, both of you. You are the rapscallions of the worst kind. Now then, now then. Hinsels ain't going to get us nowhere. They only aggravate things. Therefore, gentlemen, I have a suggestion to put before you. I suggest that we, all of us, make a big effort to drive these birds back over the road onto Mr. Azel's land. How does that strike you, Mr. Azel? It'll be a step in the right direction. Get on with it, then. How about you, Willem? Are you agreeable to this action? I think it's a splendid idea. I'll be very glad to help. So will Danny. Come on, my lads. Let's push these lazy birds over the road. Shoo! Shoo! Off you go! Beat it! Get out of here! Clouds of pheasants rose up into the air, clapping their enormous wings. It was then I realized that in order to fly across the road, the birds would first have to fly over Mr. Hazel's mighty Rolls Royce, which lay right in their path with its door still open. Most of the pheasants were too dopey to manage this, so down they came again, smack on top of the great silver car. I could hear their sharp claws scraping into the paintwork as they struggled to hang on, and already they were depositing their dirty droppings all over the roof. Get them off! Get those birds off my car! Can't you see they're ruining the paintwork, you madman? Paintwork? What paintwork? We've done our very best to encourage these birds over the road, but they're too ignorant to understand. My car, man! Get them away from my car! Ah, your car. Yes, I see what you mean, sir. Beastly dirty birds, pheasants are. Why don't you just hop in quick and drive her away fast? We'll have to get off then, won't they? Mr. Hazel, who seemed only too glad of an excuse to escape from this madhouse, made a dash for the open door of the rolls and leaped into the driver's seat. The moment he was in, Sergeant Samway slammed the door. Drive on, Mr. Hazel, sir. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Get going quick. There's no time to lose. Ignore them, pheasants, Mr. Hazel, and accelerate that engine. Mr. Hazel didn't have much choice. He started the engine and the great rolls shot off down the road with clouds of pheasants rising up from it in all directions. Drive on, Mr. Hazel, sir. Hurry up, hurry up. <laughs> going, okay, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Hazel, accelerate that engine. You're not supposed to drive. It would be undoubtedly a great horror honor to be shot by... <laughs> what are you doing? That's not what it was. Get out. Rise up this morning.